that. You know you what? Know. You know what drives me crazy? Mm -hmm. Okay, when somebody says like, "Oh, dude, I, I need to do that. Like, I've been meaning to do that," and that person is still saying that a month later. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, dude, that irks my nerve. Like, and I think to myself because I am the way I am. Like, I think. Well, what like. Especially like when it's people that I work with, right? Mm -hmm. I think to myself like, fuck, this fucking person took vacation. They had like a couple weekends off. Like they had the days off together. Sometimes that doesn't always happen when you have uh -huh. days off together. And sometimes they're scattered, which I get sometimes can be hard to like handle things. Yeah. But like, I don't know. If you can't wake up for yourself and get up and do stuff for yourself, like nobody's going to do that shit for you. You know? Like, not a lot of people have the leadership like you were talking about about the podcast like we're gonna do later yeah like it's the lead like taking control of your own shit like not a lot of people have that you know I, I think I always think to myself too like how are you so busy especially in a small town because <laughs> people don't do shit in a small town like yeah well cause all they know is work and home yeah but also your work doesn't define you no, that's where people struggle. See, that's, I don't know, that's weird. That's why, like, a lot of people let work be their definition, and they just want to make money, and that's all they care about. They don't want more, because that's, or maybe that's their capacity. Mm. Or their standards, I guess. Because we were taught Can to Can standards equal capacity? Because, I don't know, if you can't, I don't know, I can't see my, like, you should be able to break your own ceilings, you know? Yeah. Like, you should be able to, like, damn, like, I don't, but then I think it goes into self-motivation and, like, momentum. And it's the, your surroundings. Go and back to who you surround yourself with. Yeah. So, that's the thing. Some people, it's that life checklist. Go to school, get a job, have a family, get married, buy a house. Maybe that's, that's their standard, that's all they know. So that's why, like, for people that are more creative, I think I think that goes back to if you're a creative person, then you're able to break boundaries and take action. So not all. It's not a lot of people. I think some people have creativity up. in like different ways, though. Like I'm not creative with food, right? Yeah. But you have people that can get really creative and make some bomb ass food. Yeah. And then you have people that know how to take pictures of that bomb ass food. Yes. And then you have people that know how to take video of that bomb ass food. And then you have people that can market it really good. But all these people don't necessarily know how to do each step of that thing. You know what I mean? So I think it can come in different ways. But also I think some people are really good at managing things so well that maybe that is their capacity or that is their... But even going back to what you were saying, like there are people that can do that stuff, but don't know, they don't see it as something. Because they're so used uh, to doing it, so they're like, true. they just like that's like, not a skill. Really yeah, hard. or like they don't think like they can make money doing that stuff, so they're just like, I'm gonna stick to this job. But nowadays, Instagram, it's like you can have a fucking food page and you can be like, yeah, popular. that's true. I don't know how you can monetize that, but then there's food bloggers. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just the way that they people think. You know, that's kind of hard, too, because, like, I've always, like, when I try to go for, like, new positions at work or I've, like, been interested in certain things, like, yeah. you know, they, you talk about, like, going to an interview. Like, for example, when I interviewed to be, like, an assistant manager or whatever. Yeah. Like, you have to really sit there. Like, obviously, if you're going to take that interview seriously, but you have to really sit there and, like, really think, like, damn, what have I brought to the table? Mm -hmm. Because doing your day-to-day -day job, yeah, like that's what you're getting paid for but like what have you done one of the questions that you should be able to ask via the interview but like what have you done beyond your let's say job description or job duties yeah and that can mean not necessarily metric metrics wise but like how do you bring a team together what kind of energy do you bring which i don't think that a lot of people people are see that yeah. yeah see that and for me, that took a while until people started pointing it out, like in other leadership, you know? Yeah. Um, which I think is important, too, like to have those conversations, like, hey, like be open to like feedback, because that's what I had to do. Like, I didn't know the answers to that going into my interview, so I had to reach out to other leadership 
and say like, hey, what are some things that you think I can improve on? What are some of my, you know, I guess what are some of my goods or what, what, what are some of the things that I do bring to the table that you see in me or like potential uh -huh. and or, you know, what are um, some of the things that you think I can improve on or, you know, adjust or realign. And that's not like an easy conversation to have. So I think going back to like yeah. outside the world, like outside of work, like. Um, it's not an easy conversation to have because not everybody can take feedback without getting offended. That's the thing too. I think nowadays everybody gets offended about everything. A little too easily, huh? Yeah. It gets kind of stressful if you think about it. Yeah, because sometimes I have to like be really strategic about how I'm going to deliver a message to specific people. There's followers, then there's leaders, and there's self-sufficient people. Because you can still be a leader and still be like not self-sufficient. You know. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's just, and that's the thing. You can be a leader be good at it but work does see the here's the thing work does drain a lot of people and that's where you lose your motivation mm -hmm. and then it's i think it does take amount of awareness and emotional intelligence to step out of that and know that there's more that you can do yourself and find the joy and energy to get there because like let's say you work like you you're, hi dude. you're high functioning you can go to work deal with people exchange energies you can be tired but at the end of the day you, you come home and you want to do your podcast you want to do make t-shirts and stuff because there's passion there and it's you it just you have that drive not everybody can go home and detach and be like i want to work on a project for myself <laughs> you know yeah yeah so that's where you're like I think it depends, I don't know, what your feelings and thoughts are when it comes to like high functioning individuals. Because not everybody's high functioning, right? They yeah, can yeah. just go to work and just be like, I'm fucking done for the day. Sometimes I have days like that, but it's, those are more scarce than the others. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that could be like part of like an 80-20 rule. Like 20% yeah. of the, my days or whatever. I'm not, I don't even say 20%, honestly. Yeah. It's probably less than that, but... High functioning. I don't know. I feel like. I think you're high functioning because you can do a lot. I think. I would consider you as high functioning. But I. See, but that's normal. I wouldn't even. Okay, if you didn't point that out, I wouldn't even have like. You wouldn't have thought of that. No, time. I'm like. What do you mean? We have. I have hours in the day to give, so. You know. And I think it's mindset too, right? Yeah. It's your mindset it's true too. and being high functioning. That's true. It's a lot of discipline and drive. You don't yeah. have to drive. Do discipline is a little bit hard, dude. Discipline is... You, your discipline gets tested when you're in the health and fitness stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's how I work yeah. to be more disciplined. It's because of the fucking... Planning your macros and pre-planning your shit that you're going to eat and all that. Oh, it's a lot of discipline. Yeah. That I think that's like when you learn, when you're like in it, then it tests you. I think it's helping me now. Like creating yeah. that type of discipline is helping me like do this stuff, you know? Yeah. Because like, and then listening to like podcasts too. Like, yeah. I've been like really trying to jump on listening to like all of that because I feel like sometimes just listening to certain things and like hearing other people push motivate you like yeah. with that same energy yeah. is like personally what I need to get going like I need other people to hype me up I need to listen to like somebody gas me up to like yeah. and it doesn't have to be specifically to me you know they're talking to like a generic you know just like the public yeah. after podcast so, like Chad's podcast I've been listening to that one and I'm like holy shit this is like 
a coach yelling at me like in the locker room and I'm getting ready to go fucking play the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what it feels like. And I feel like that's like what I want. Because I do also feel like people delivering the message, mm-hmm. it doesn't always going to, it's not always going to connect with everybody. Yeah. But the people that it does connect with, like that's what that need, that's what they need at that moment to make shit happen. And so the certain things that I listen to, I'm like, fuck yeah, this is what I need because it's going to rattle me up and, like, yeah. get me going. Yeah. And, like, I just hope that I have a little bit of that for other people. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Chad's energy isn't going to match everybody's energy, right? The, the, yeah. the way he delivers a message isn't always going to resonate with people. And that's okay. Because everybody, you know, Everybody has different energy. Everybody yeah. brings something different. That Just like you bring a different energy for, like, your friends and your you know, on your podcast and everything else, you know? Yeah. And not everybody can do it. Not. And that's what, like, I think when you started, yeah, it, like, kick-started the stuff that I was like, oh, fuck, okay, you know? Isn't that cool, though, that you just, like, oh, yes, like, do you feel like when you see people you know that are doing stuff, like, not necessarily in the same uh, lane that you're in, but, like, just in the creative field, and not just me, but, like, other people that you know that are creative that you feel are closer to you, do you feel like, fuck, if, you know, this homie can do it, I can do it too, like? It depends. I have friends that are creative, but I think what separates us, say, like, you, because, like, Okay, for me, it was you that you, when you use Kickstarter, you're like, fuck, if she, can do, if she can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. But I think it's also the way that you presented it, because you showed passion. I have creative friends, but they do it as work. So there's no passion anymore. Because in your videos, in your podcast, you can tell that you love this shit, so that you bring that vibe, which invites people to kickstart it. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can have people that can do shit, yeah. just to do shit. But it's not the same vibe. If they showed more passion and eagerness and just like hyped about it, mm-hmm. that kickstarts people like that want to do stuff. That's why, you know, it helped me start my stuff. But like I have, you know, because me going to design school, it's like I have all these designer friends, you know, but it's, like, yeah. you know, it's not the same. Dude, I would love to have fucking designer friends. I would love <laughs> to learn how to design, dude. I got you. That's just fucking sick to me. To me, I think like that's like such a sick ass trait to like know because you can do so much you yeah. do a lot but because he can do so much it can be a devil fall i think good point good point a little too much of everything can always be not so good you know yeah so that's just the way i see it yeah you just have to have like a good um, balance yeah. um and I think for a lot of things for me now, I've kind of aligned, like, to have patience to do this stuff, to have the drive and the motivation. Like, instead because I was recording on my way over here, like, talking about, like, okay, I'm driving to Vegas, and, like, you know, and I think to myself, like, maybe some people think I'm crazy that I grew up for hours out here just to create content, but, like, I also think to myself, my previous self, where it's like, dude, I would drive four or five hours just to go party. Like, I would make that effort just to go party. And it's just like, if I can be extra as fuck in certain aspects of my life, why can I, like, shift that over? Yeah, apply that, apply that yeah. to, to the things that now I'm interested in, that now, I'm like, that I've always wanted to do, but I've never had that, like, I guess, like, that go for it type thing. Like, I think I think it happens as you age, too. Like, you use that energy to apply it elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, think so too. there's no way you're gonna be like, let's go far out and party. You're like, fuck, like now we're in our thirties. It's like, no, that's not, yeah. not the same yeah. energy. It's definitely not. It's definitely not. But yeah, I think about that stuff, and I think a lot like for the people that say that they want to start shit and they want to do stuff, you know. Yeah. And some of these people reach out like, oh yeah, like I'm getting like you know I'm hyped up like whatever and like. It's been a couple months, and, I'm, and I think, I mean, I'm not going to tell nobody that, but like, where you at? Like, you know what I mean? Like, No, because I feel like nowadays people do a lot of talk. And they, they can do a lot of talk, get the info, and we can all do that. Because we all research, do the info, but you gotta, it takes another 
like to push to cool. jump off the bench and do shit. Do shit, yeah. Because there's always a lot of, and I think it's also just like the fear factor and the risk taking, like people over calculate sometimes. Yeah, and then I think that's also part of like looking for excuses. I know for a long time like, that was me. Like for two years, I was like, because I wanted to be YouTube, and I was just like, I was just scared of people would say about like the shit that I'd be doing or posting or like. I was so worried about like, oh fuck, my friends are gonna talk shit to me. But now it's like they get it. Like, I think I think also now it's like normalized. Yeah, so I'm kind of like. Mm-hmm. How do you get over that hump for some people? Like some people don't. And they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get started as soon as I get this camera. As soon as I learn how to edit. Uh, as soon as I, you know what I mean? like. But you know how, how we go back and talking about how we're like, we, we go out and buy the extra shit. Oh but, yeah. But then it's like, you can use your phone, you can, but you can, to yeah. us, we're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Standards. See, and then that's kind of like, have you done too much research? Because now you know too much. Or sometimes going into a situation like very naive, yeah. it's like humble, then you're just like, some people make it just off their phone. Like, but not that that's the intent to make it, but I'm saying like some people go off and risk it, risk it all. Just that's what like makes me think, right? It's like, do we need to buy that stuff, this stuff? Oh yeah, probably Maybe. not. Probably not, but I think that's where I'm like, why? Why did I need to do but then. It's a level of standard that you have for yourself to be able to create and have certain things, I guess, to... But do you think that standard hurts us because the way that we present ourselves? I just think we're trying to be the best version of ourselves and try to, you know, push out the best thing that we possibly could. I think that, okay, so if you have a tank, right? Yeah. And you know that you can give 100% of that tank to whatever it is you're trying to get into. If it's going to take maybe buying that extra thing, spending that extra $100, 20 bucks or whatever, on whatever it is you need that's going to give, you're going to be able to give that 100% of that tank, you're going to do it because that's the type of person you want. Yeah. But then it's like you think back to... Like if you have friends that are like, I want to do it too, but then they see how you got all this like nice shit. And then... See, and that could be that could be intimidating too. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Those are the standards. That's why I don't really like talking too much about like the shit that I have yeah. because I don't want it to be that. At the end of the day, I just want you to start something. I just want you to do what you said you want to do. Like if that's going to genuinely bring you joy. I guess that's like the 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 problem we would want to solve, but it's hard to solve it when we never did it, mm-hmm. right? It's like, we can tell people, use your phone, you can use your, um, you know, with Maybe we should do an episode with just, like, fucking with phone and, like, walking phone. Are you going to be phone. okay with that, though? Right? Because it's also our own standard of output. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, iPhones have, like, well, my phone has, like, 4K and shit, so. <laughs> Even like something so simple like that, right? Yeah. I'm still using an iPhone 8. And I'm like, fuck, all these motherfuckers with iPhone 11s and shit, <laughs> like in pros, like yo, all your photos come out legit. And I'm over here like iPhone 8 myself. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I need filters, more filters. You know, that in itself like makes me feel some type of way because yeah. I'm like, well, I can't fucking shoot. Don't photos from my iPhone. I, I feel like the iPhone eight still your camera though. Is that you have a big camera? Or no. a big camera? I you can tell the quality difference. Mm. Even if you go for potential, you can make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think just for the sake of testing shit and proving a point that you can do it. Yeah. Make it as good as you possibly can, obviously, like, for whatever device you have. Well, you gotta think about people that do want to start podcasting or YouTube. It's also editing software. So I, you know, because I go off of iMovies, that's all I know. But yeah. I do my best to make it look good on iMovies. But say somebody who's just starting out that doesn't know how to do any of this. So I feel like iMovies are simplest, and if they have a Mac, it's already free. Yeah. Uh, there's also an app uh, on, that you can edit from your phone, um, LumaFusion. It's $20 one time. 
Um, and they have tons of like, tutorials on how to do it. But it, that's the other thing is like if you know you're trying to do something on a budget, you sh also should know that it's going to take work to learn stuff. So you should have the patience to be able to learn it so you can do it if that's what you genuinely want to do. It's not going to matter where you edit. As long as I you think that's where it's at. If you're super People that do it off the phone because they're so passionate and they have that drive. They're like, I'm going to work with what I've got. But yeah. people that think about it, it's like a different... They're not going to be like, I'm going to start with this. Because mm -hmm. I think that's different. It's a passion drive part versus someone who's like, I don't want to do it. I think I want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and that's because YouTubing is glorified too. Like, it is a sick job, you know? Yeah. But I think most of the people that I watch, at least, at some point, at some point they say, this is a lot of fucking work. This is a lot of work. It's, a, it's like a job, full-time job, once they do it for a living. Like, it's not all fun and games. Like, there's some so, business yeah. aspect to it, some back-end aspect to it, where, it, you know, they're editing for hours. They're, you know? And I think it's, you have to have the passion to do it. Like, say if today we didn't have the passion to do it, we'd be like, fuck this, this is a lot of fun. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know now you know how long it takes. So you set time aside to do it. That's like your escape, right? It's yeah. a passion project. But if people are just doing it to I don't know, think they want to do it and then when they get it together, not what I imagine. Yeah. It's too much work. Too much work. It yeah. is a lot of work actually. You know. Yeah. It's I think it's also just how people really want to spend their time. We we can spend our time going to work and coming home and just chilling. You can do that. That's fine if you're perfectly happy. Yeah, right. Some people don't have that like extra brain power to do more. Yeah. But does that fall? Does that fall into like the toxic thing? You constantly want to do more. That hustle, because now people are saying the hustle, the grind, can be toxic because we need rest. Right. It's a balance. It's a balance. Yeah, always for sure. Balance. Always a balance. No matter what you do, it's a balance. Yeah. And that in itself, some people just can't fucking juggle. Yeah. People yeah. can't juggle two things. Sometimes. Yeah. I make you think about people. Yeah. Sometimes I always fear, wish that if you were more simple, like I could just go to work and be cool. Um, very rare, and it only happens when I'm like high stress. But even then, I feel like I can handle a lot of stress. So I feel like when I get to that point, most people wouldn't even be able to handle my high stress moments that I am able to handle. So that's that's tough. Like sometimes I'm just like, why do I feel like I need to? Why do I feel like I need to do this? But that, that's like my why is like, because I love doing it. Like, that's why I stress myself out because I love doing it and I want to commit. And it's like, if I commit something, I want to like... See it through. See it through, yeah. A lot of people can't see things through though. They can start it, but they don't, they don't finish. That's how it was when I started Wax. When I started Wax, I just wasn't ready. I could not handle the pressure that people were putting on me over. Like, I just, I couldn't. I was, I was so worried about like, pleasing people and making sure that like the stuff that they wanted I would create instead of creating for myself. And I was just like, I can't do this. I can't. I mean, I came around, you know, it's something different. But this is like, like, for me, this is like it. Like, this is the thing that I'm like, okay, I really love doing this. I like it. And I mean, I think, you know, it also changes, you know, it evolves. Right? Like, I remember back in the day when I first started doing things too. Like, that was fun, something all that was me. I didn't see it all the way through. Like, I saw it through, but I didn't see it. Like, I didn't finish it. Then I, when I moved here, so I started talking. But then I just took away, took a step away because my family, like, you need to get a job. And then I got a job. So now I'm like, but it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. And sometimes I think that's what it is. People, people, it's like when it gets too hard, people quit. Mm -hmm. That's when you really have to dig deep. Yeah. Like I like crafting shit. 
I know, I like to, I love this shit. Like, I can do this all day, I can make stuff all day, I just like doing it. Yeah, I like crafting stuff, but... Like, I find joy in helping people bring shit to life, like, in this matter. Yeah. So if you're gonna ask me to design, I can. I can have the back of myself, which is weird. I think that's why I ended up switching Black Label to a service company, because I don't you enjoy that aspect of that? Because uh, I have the tools to help people make it happen. Mm -hmm. but and that's a big thing too, like, figuring out one of the processes you really enjoy doing. Because I can tell you that I love, like, creating ideas and stuff. I might not know exactly how to work all the programs. I'll fucking try and I'll YouTube until I fumble my...